Okay, so for the next topic, we're going to talk about drag or air resistance, right? They're synonyms. And um, this is just to introduce to you this, this drag force so that you just have some general knowledge about it. This is a topic, this is a topic which is not very, um, you won't be required to know the details of it. Usually they'll give you, they'll give you, uh, they'll tell you what the drag force, the, the form of the drag force is, right? And the reason is because drag itself is still a very, it's a very, it's a bit imprecise because it's very numerical in nature, right? We we still haven't solved Navier-Stokes equation. We still do not know the exact, um, we, we cannot solve things analytically very easily. So most of the time it's more numerical in nature where you're just given some coefficient and uh, yeah, and, and given the general behavior of it. Um, yeah, so, so drag comes up in the topic of terminal velocity in particular. Um, and that's one of the biggest aspects of drag. So drag is a, it's just a force, right? That is dependent on the velocity of an object. So that means the faster, right, the object is moving, the more drag it experiences. And this will have consequences for terminal velocity soon. Right? So in general, right, drag is a, we often write drag, the formula for drag looks something like that. But it depends on this dimensionless coefficient, right? And this dimensional coefficient is also depends on v also. And you there's no exact formula for this. Um so instead, usually people would measure this drag coefficient experimentally. Um yeah. And all you need to know about it for physics olympiad is that at low velocities, right, because drag is approximately uh, proportional to 1 over velocity, the net effect is that drag force is proportional to velocity, right? This is at low velocities, right? And at high velocities, the coefficient of drag is approximately constant right, with respect to velocity. So drag is approximately proportional to velocity squared. So if I were to plot drag, right, as a function of velocity, initially, perhaps it looks something like this, linear, then after some time, it will start to look quadratic. Okay, yeah. So so at, at, there's no precise cutoff. It's more like a smooth transition, and that's why because of this imprecise nature of drag, we often um don't see um questions involving drag specifically. Usually they're just a they're, they're just a force that happens to be around and uh, takes part in the calculations. So, um, yeah. So. The reason, just a side note, the reason for these two behaviors is that at low velocities, you have laminar flow, right? You're, and, and at high velocities, um, you have turbulent flow, right? This is something to do with the Reynolds number, Reynolds number, and something to do with fluid mechanics and turbulence. Um, which th we'll talk about that in fluid mechanics in future, but it's not a very big topic in uh, Physics Olympiad. Okay, so the... The most important takeaway of drag force is that um, drag force causes terminal velocity to be a thing. So if you throw and if your object is falling down, right, we know that gravitational force is mg. So if mg, if there's no other forces acting on it, right, if there's no other forces, then mg goes ma, acceleration is just g, right? So any object, regardless of mass, will accelerate downwards at acceleration of g. And because acceleration, it's a function of time, it's constant, right? It's just g, right? Um, that implies that velocity is always increasing, right? Remember, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So this means that velocity as a function of time will just increase like that, right? Um, so this is the case without, without drag. Right? This is the case without drag. But if you do have drag, then the equations are modified a bit. So you still have your gravitational const constant gravitational force mg, right? Nothing changes about that. But this time you have a drag force, right? And drag force, like friction, it always opposes um, the direction of motion, just that now instead of sliding, right? Now you just have an object that's moving through some fluid. So in this case, the object is assuming that it's falling down, right? That That is an assumption that we need to take um, Bit care about right because if you're throwing an object up right then drag will actually be downwards right so this is falling object right this is a case for a falling object which means that the velocity is downwards 
for a falling object, drag will be upwards, right? And um, so the net forces acting on the object will be mg minus f drag, right? Minus because f drag is in the opposite direction. And this is equals to mass times acceleration. So remember over here, this is a constant function of time. F drag, right, is a function of velocity, right? It depends on velocity. Um, so it depends on V. And V itself depends on time, right? And lastly, acceleration is dV over dt. Right? So something to note over here is that if we if we plotted right the velocity as a function of time, right? Initially, right, when the object is just released, let's say it's released from rest, right? Then the velocity initially is zero. And initially, right, is gonna increase because drag initially is zero, it's gonna increase almost linearly. And at this point, right, the gradient Right, it's gonna be it's gonna look like G. However, over time, now we have some non-zero velocity, right? Some non-zero velocity. So drag has increased. At the moment drag has increased, right? You see the left hand side, the left hand side has decreased. Right? And what is the left hand side? Left hand side it is the as is the mass times acceleration. So mass of course remains constant. So if the left hand side Right, if drag has increased, the left hand side has decreased, that implies that the acceleration has also decreased. Right? So initially the gradient was G, right? Now the gradient is a bit less than G, right? Gradient is less than G, right? And and hence the velocity, the rate of change of velocity would slow. Right? But remember it's still a it's still positive velocity. And just, just a quick reminder, we're taking downwards as positive okay that's why I get that's why velocity is positive right so um yeah so so as velocity increases in value the gradient of the velocity time graph will get less and less deep and net effect right is that it's going to asymptote towards some value what does asymptote mean asymptote means it's going to approach right but never equal right something and what is this value right this value where velocity remains almost constant, right, is corresponding to this this velocity is known as the terminal velocity. And this terminal velocity is the velocity that makes the left hand side equal to zero. So if there is some velocity that makes the net force zero, right, the left hand side zero, then the acceleration will be zero and hence the velocity wouldn't change. So in other words, an object traveling at terminal velocity, and by definition, right, um, object traveling at velocity, terminal velocity means that the left hand side has the net force is zero, right? An object traveling at that terminal velocity would not want to change its velocity. Okay, it would not want to change its velocity because acceleration is zero. And hence, um, the closer you are, the closer you approach this terminal velocity, the more constant you're going to become right and hence this is the this is the behavior of the velocity time graph right velocity as a function of time for an object that is falling with air resistance okay so yeah so just as a side note of how parachutes work right parachutes work such that assuming you're falling at terminal velocity over here right let's say at this point you open a parachute you open a parachute. What does the parachute do? The parachute suddenly increases the drag coefficient, right? Sorry, it suddenly increases the cross-sectional area, right? Um, it, uh, object that has a bigger cross-sectional area, imagine it's very, very wide, right? It takes up a lot of area, right? It's going to, it's going to have a higher drag. Right, for the same velocity. So initially we're at the same velocity, but because now drag has increased drastically, left hand side, right, the moment you input open the parachute, drag has increased a lot, right? Even though it's the same velocity, but now area has increased a lot. So left hand side is negative. And negative means that there's negative acceleration. Right? So 
the moment you open your parachute, your velocity is suddenly going to fall. Suddenly going to fall. The exact behavior in the middle over here is uh, it's not it's probably not linear, but it's just going to fall a lot, right? And and after that, it would it would uh it would accept towards a new a new terminal velocity, a new ver terminal velocity with the parachute. And this terminal velocity is something that is safe for a human, right? And that's why, um, yeah, and that's roughly how a parachute works. Um, yeah, so there will be questions, uh, that there are questions in general from physics, uh, the physics syllabus that ask how a parachute works. So that, so knowing this mechanics, right? Understanding this equation and how, the, and how the parachute affects the drag force and how how um velocity evolves as a function of time right understanding this graph quantitative qualitatively right that means without equa without the numbers just in general understanding the graph behavior would be important for physics olympiad um it turns out that if we make assumptions about the drag force we can form a differential equation and we can find the exact expression for um, this graph we can find a numerical uh, an analytical formula for this graph and but that will only be done when we understand um, differential equations okay